Welcome to 2084. Hi, we're Blooper Team, and today we want to walk you through the cyberpunk dystopian world of our new game, Observer. If you played our first game, Layers of Fear, you know that we make a different kind of horror. Something a bit more Don't cerebral, dark, emotional, Just and psychological. We you? like to call like it Chiron hidden you? horror. I was a KPD, if that's what you're asking. Seriously? We haven't had a cop around these parts and... We think of yeah, hidden horror yeah. as a subgenre. Well, there are a million different types of action yeah, games out there, but you don't see that kind of diversity in horror games. Most horror games are designed completely around survival. Someone or something is trying to kill you, zombies usually, and you must survive using whatever weapons you can find, like machine guns and grenade launchers and the occasional machete. A few people who played Layers of Fear went into the experience expecting survival horror and were naturally disappointed in our lack of machetes and missile launchers. So let's clear up that confusion right now. What is hidden horror? We define it using two main ideas. The first is the subject. What is this game about? The access on which the whole story and gameplay revolves. In Layers of Fear, the subject dealt with the edge of sanity that cliff where sanity ends and insanity begins, and then jumping right over. In Observer, the subject is the boundaries of our own humanity. Where does our humanity begin, and where does it end? The proverbial fight between man and the machines we create. The deepening reliance on technology in our everyday lives. How that technology can be used as a tool, but also as a weapon. Don't be afraid. Don't After be the subject, help. the second element of hidden horror is catharsis. We want to scare you in such a way that you are going to feel a release. We want to draw out the horror that hides within you. The horror that hides within us all. We'll help you to confront those fears, look them straight in the eye, and let them go. Damn it. Still no connection. Listen. One of the fans of Layers of Fear put it best. So that's what it feels like to be insane. I can get whoever's responsible for this if you help me find him. So what does it feel like to be an observer? Observers are neural detectives. They no, have the authority to hack people's minds and relive their memories as a way to solve crimes. The device on Dan's wrist is the DR3AT, or as it's known to observers, the Dream Eater. The Dream Eater is what allows Dan to hack Is into people. The idea of inserting yourself into the mind of another is just one of the ways we test the boundaries of humanity, the boundaries of the individual. If someone is inside your head, are you in fact you anymore? Is the ability to force the deepest memories from a person morally acceptable? One could argue it's a new form of psychological rape. That's certainly how the Class C citizens of Krakow feel here in the year 2084. They are scared to death of observers and refer to them as a leeches. If you read the tech headlines of today, this frightening future doesn't feel that far off. We already overshare on social media. We are also beginning to augment ourselves with implants like RFID chips and prosthetics. Has technology changed you? Are you being influenced without being aware of it? These are the type of questions we want you to ask yourself as you play Observer. One of the reasons people enjoy horror, enjoy nightmarish monsters scaring the daylights out of us in movie theaters around the world, is that it relieves tension. That's what catharsis is, emotional release. But in games, you make the choices. You decide what happens. That's much more powerful than simply watching a movie on a screen. You experience and interact with the horror yourself. Because of this, you are constantly asking yourself as you play, why am I afraid? Why does this feel wrong? What am I really afraid of? In this dystopian future, if you really stop and think about these questions, you'll experience what we like to call 
Catharsis 2.0. This is a release from fears you didn't even know you had. That's some next level catharsis right there. Is it morally acceptable to hack a person's mind? Even if the person gives their consent, the observer will have complete access to that person's entire memory. They can find, take, and use whatever they want. These memories are a private part of this man's life. Detective Lazarski is just plowing right through it. Dan is driven to go as deep as he possibly can to find the truth. In this man's mind, we will learn that he's an ex-con, a recovering drug addict. So we will see the bars of his mental prison he has created for himself, the chains of addiction that hold him back. Some people may rush through this and not notice. But those of us who stop and think about what we are seeing will experience something quite a bit more nuanced and layered. Everything is a symbol. Everything has meaning. The question is, what does it mean to you? At its heart, Observer is a mystery, and you will no doubt have a lot of questions building up as you play. These are your questions. If you stop and think about them, you may find your own answers and maybe even a bit of release. That's the kind of horror we want to make at Blooper Team. That's hidden horror. Thanks for watching. We'll have a lot more Observer to share with you soon, and we can't wait for you to play Observer for yourself when it releases later this year. Until then, ask yourself, what would you do if your fears were hacked?